Matt fans, welcome back. Today we are looking at Ordnance Survey Python styles. Ordnance Survey are awesome and provide vector map district for free. They also provide styles so that we can make our maps look like Ordnance Survey maps. The only trouble is when you add these into QGIS, they come in in alphabetical order with no styles attached. And so you have to go into each individual layer and add a style. This is not fun. It can become very tedious very quickly. And so what we're looking to do is write a Python script that does this for us, reorders the layers into the correct order, restyles the layers with the selected Ordnance Survey styles. And look at that. We have a wonderful Ordnance Survey map of leads. I'd like to try you Python style. Let's begin then. When I started on this, one of the first things I noticed was that when you add the layers in, they have a prefix for the associated reference to the OS map, as we can see here on the OS website. However, when you download the styles, they all have generic names. And there is a handy quick start PDF that you can open when you download the styles as well. This PDF is a good reference because it lets us know what order and what names the layers should have. When you're looking to do something like this, QGIS has a handy Python console. So we can go up to plugins and then go to Python console. That opens up our console and in here we can type anything we want. So let's go for the usual, hello Mac fans. And you can see that pops up in the console in the top. Now, if we're writing a script, it can be quite useful to have an editor on the go. So I'm just gonna click this button, show editor, and there we go. We have an editor available. Now this works just the same way. So I can do print, hello, map fans. And if I run this, you can see here that QGIS is opening that script and it is running whatever's inside it. Now, the first thing I wanted to do with this script is to rename the layers in our layers panel. Seems like a fairly easy task. And so let's discover how we can do that. I did some digging around and found Lutra Consulting have a blog all about the QGIS layer tree API. I'll put a link to that in the description below and you can have a look at it at your leisure. But it's a pretty comprehensive walkthrough on how the layer tree object works. And so we can move things around, we can modify things, we can rename things. So working from this, I was able to put together a little loop. First up, I want to make an object of the layer tree root. So I'm gonna call this root and I'm gonna get the current instance of our QGS QGIS project and then I'm going to add the layer tree root. So root is now the layer tree root for this particular project. Next I'm going to set up a for loop and that is going to be for all the children that we have in the root. So the layer tree root has child nodes and that's what we're looking for here. So our root will just be the layers panel and the children within it will be each of the layers. Next, I'm going to get the name of each child because our layer object has a name and I'm gonna call that base name. And if there is an underscore in the first three characters of the base name, that's what this little bit does here, then I'm going to set the name to be everything after the first three characters. And that's what this line does. So let's just run that. And there you can see on the left hand side that has renamed all of our layers. Now, if I didn't have this little if here, if I ran this again, it would take off another three characters and keep going until there was nothing left of the layer names. So I've renamed my layers and I've got rid of that little prefix. That's great. Um, if we go back to the PDF, then I can see actually we have to add a number of road layers because different zoom levels mean that we've got different styles affecting the roads. 
So we have a total of six road layers and it looks like the roundabout layer is also doubled up. If we need multiple copies of the road layer and the roundabout layer, I'm going to have to add those in and I can do that using Python. But if I just go to where I downloaded the data originally and we have a look at the shape file, we can see that renaming in the layers panel doesn't rename the shape file. It's only cosmetic. And so we might need this little prefix in order to find our particular shape files. So I'm just going to add this little line of code, which is going to set a variable called prefix and it's going to get the active layer. It's going to get the name and it's going to get the first three characters of that name. So that will be our prefix. Now you might notice that I've already renamed the layers. And so while I'm working on this, I'm going to have to remove these, add them back in and give it a run. So I've done that, I've taken the layers out and I'm just going to add in a little print statement here to make sure that our prefix is working. So let's run this. And over in the console, you can see that our prefix SE underscore is intact. Excellent. Now we can get to work on adding the roads and the roundabout. So first of all, I'm going to set something up called layer and that is going to be map layers by name and we're going to look for prefix and building. So that will set the layer to be the building shape file. Good stuff. What are we going to do with that layer? Well, we are going to find its path and this is going to allow us to have a look at where on our computer that particular shape file is stored. So I'm going to add a little print statement there just to say print the path and let's have a look at what that looks like. So I have cleared out the layers and I've added them back in and let's give this a run. Ooh, name print. Aha, we've got a capital P there. We do not need a capital P. And let's run that again. Okay, so we've renamed our layers and we can see here in the console that we have the path to our shape file. Now you'll also notice that there is a pipe in here and it gives you the layer ID of zero. Now we don't need that, so I'm just going to clean this up. By adding this line, we will find the pipe symbol and we'll just use everything before that pipe. Now when we're working with file names and directories, it can be quite useful to use the OS library. So I'm just going to import that operating system library and then I am going to add this line which will get my directory and the file name and it's going to split that clean path variable into directory and file name. Now I'm going to create a variable called road file and I'm going to give it the directory of where my shape files are saved. I'm going to add a backslash and then I'm going to add the prefix plus the road.shp and that is going to find our road shape file on our computer. Now we already have a road file but we need to add five more to make six in total so I'm going to set up a little for loop right here just going to make sure that my indentation is correct and that for loop is going to run through five times and it's going to find the road file and add it to our map. So I've cleared out my layers and re-added them so that we can give this a little test. Now let's run the script. And on the left you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five roads that have been added to our layers and everything's been renamed. Awesome. You might notice that I'm testing this quite a lot as I go through and it's a good habit to get into because it means that if you do make a mistake, you know pretty much for sure where that mistake has been made if you're going line by line and then testing as you go. Now we also need our roundabouts in here. So I'm just going to add a line for that. And here we go. So I've set up a variable for the roundabout file that's going to be called roundabout.shp and then I'm just going to add that. We've already got one roundabout so we only need one extra roundabout added in. Now I don't want to keep adding road files and roundabout files uh, every time I run this 
So what I'm going to do is set up a little if statement. And I'm just going to say if the prefix contains an underscore, so the first three characters of the name, then I'm going to run all of that previous code that we've just put in. And if it doesn't, then we're not going to run that code. So if I run this now, you should see that we haven't added extra roads, we haven't added extra roundabouts, and that's because the layer names do not have an underscore in the first three characters. So we've just sectioned off this bit of code to run only when we've got fresh layers in. Now that we've added all the layers that we need, we need to get them in the right order. So if I go back to that PDF, I can have a look at the order, and also by going back to Lutra Consulting's blog, I can have a look at how to move nodes. And so what we need to do here is we need to clone each layer and then we need to insert it into the layer tree and then we need to remove the original layer from the layer tree. So let's get on and do that. So in order to clone every single layer, I am going to hard code this. And there we go. I've set up my variable and then for the root, I'm going to say root.children, get the first layer in the layer tree and clone it. And you can see we move through sequentially. Now you might be wondering if it's better to use a loop here. It possibly is, but then we get into dangerous territory when we're actually reordering the layers as well. So. I've gone with hard coding, but if you'd like to make an improvement to the code, by all means fork it and do your best. And once we have cloned all the layers that are in the layer tree, I then need to reorder them. So I had to go back to the PDF and have a close look at what order things need to be in. And you'll notice that I'm just adding one on to the end here as for the position. So we keep all the original layers in the layers panel and then I add them as needed. There's possibly a more efficient way to do this, but this works for now and I'm quite happy with it. We haven't run things for a while, so let's get back up and add in our vector layers. Add those in. Excellent. There we are. And I'm just going to hit run on this and see what happens. All looking good. We have the new layers added over on the left hand side. That's great. And then we have our clones in the correct order down here. Awesome. So now we need to remove our original layers. But before we do that, you'll see that road, 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 they're not very distinctive. So we should probably rename these. And the names that I'm going to go for are the names of the styles because that should make life easier later on when we are applying our styles. So I'm just going to call these by number and set their names hard coded again. In order to get rid of the original layers, I'm going to use another for loop and I'm going to use a range of 27. In order to reverse this, I am going to do 26 minus the number of the loop that we're currently in. The reason that I'm reversing it is so that the numbers stay the same. If we were to take out number one and then go back in and take out number two, number two would actually move to number one, if you know what I mean. Hmm, a little bit confusing, but trust me, it works to do this backwards. It is much better. Okay, we've done a couple of things here without doing a test, so we should probably do that. We've got the renaming of the roads and the roundabouts, and we've also got removal of the original layers. So let's give it a run and see if it is working. Positive, it is working. Excellent. You can see that we've got our rename here, and everything is in the right order. All that we've got left to do now is to apply the styles. Okay, for the styles, I am going to loop through every layer that is in our layers panel. I'm going to get the path of that particular layer, and then I am going to clean up that path, as we saw before, everything before the pipe. I'm then going to use that cleaned path, and I'm going to set up a URI variable with .qml 
at the end of the layer name. So we've got the directory, then we've got a backslash, we've got the name of the layer, and we've got .qml. That's the style file that we're going to be applying. And then we just need to load that style file. Let's give it a test. So I'm going to add in my layers again. Okay, so the layers are in and I'm going to hit run. One thing that you may have noticed is that here in our adding of the styles, the styles do need to be in the same directory as your shape files. So you're going to have to move those across before running this particular script. Anyway, let's run it and see what happens. And we've hit run and things have gone strange in the background. We just need a quick refresh. And then if we zoom in, you can see that we have got Ordnance Survey styles on our map. Superb. Now this should work for any of the vector district maps and by all means have fun with the code. I will be putting this up on GitHub once we get to 25 likes on this video. So don't be afraid, smash like now. It really helps the channel and helps to keep me producing videos. Thanks very much for all the subscriptions recently and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. It's been a pleasure walking you through this Python code. If you like it, then by all means, have a look at the BirdGIS website. We've got more tutorials on there. And don't forget that we are doing a live course two days in Leeds. If you'd like to know more, check out the website. And don't forget, happy mapping.